Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. Uh, for today's demonstration I want to show how I painted this image of rolling waves breaking on the shore. I'm not using any reference for this painting but I've painted this sort of scene many times over the years. Uh, I just want to show my technique for representing rolling waves. There are many ways to achieve this look and this is just my way so do experiment and find your own technique. When all said and done, there's no right or wrong way, just your way. Uh, I've used the rule of thirds as a guide for the composition and added some seagulls for interest, with one in the foreground as a focal point and the others in the distance to add depth. The paper I'm using is uh, Saunders Waterford uh, 300 gram rough white paper and this is a mixture of Cerulean blue and a touch of uh, cobalt blue for the sky uh, and I'm going to fade the, uh, the blue down to the horizon so that it's lighter at the horizon where it meets the sea. My aim with this painting is to depict a Mediterranean scene with uh, very Mediterranean colours for the sky, nice blue sky and uh, Mediterranean sea. I've just added a touch of Prussian blue to the uh, sky mix and a tiny amount of jadeite green uh, just to give it uh, that greeny blue, almost not quite turquoise but uh, almost turquoise uh, Mediterranean sea colour. Painting the uh, see where it meets, where the waves are in front of it uh, very loosely and uh, just just lifting out a little bit of the horizon there, just separating it. Just using some uh, clean water on a damp brush to soften those edges and then damping out with a uh, clean paper towel. This adds to the softness of the uh, the foaming sea. Just lifting out a little bit more on that horizon, it was uh, bleeding down a little bit. Using the same mix, I'm going to uh, very loosely paint in some uh, shadows on the rolling waves. And uh, then to soften it, I'm going to lift out uh, with a paper towel. This has two effects. It, uh, it softens the edges, but it also lifts a little bit of the pigment out. And my aim is to build up from very light to much darker tones with lots of washes and lifting out with a paper towel. As I say, this gives it that lovely soft edge and no, <clears throat> no really hard edges. And it's very random, just dropping in more colour, lifting out as I go. And I know it lifts the pigment out, but uh, it does, does stain it a little bit and you gradually build up some depth of colour. And you can also control how deep you make the shadows this way. Uh, I prefer to do it this way. I mean, I could use a damp brush with some uh, you know, clean water and soften the edges, uh, but I find using a, a paper towel gives me a little bit more control. I'm just using the same mix to um, just indicate the, uh, where the waves have uh, crashed on the shore and the, the sea is lapping onto the sand. And again, dabbing out uh, to create a bit of variety in uh, tonal values and break things up. I'll just mix up a slightly greener uh, colour for where the water is uh, is thinner on the on the sand and you get a little bit of the sand colour showing through so it uh, changes the colour a little bit and I'll just add a little bit more shadow into that as well just for, vary the tone Just added some uh, yellow ochre to the same mix just to um, show the damp part of the sand at the edge of the water 
and this is just pure yellow ochre at the very bottom where the sand is uh, a little drier. I've mixed some more of the uh, sea colour. It's dry. I've let, let it dry and it's dried a little bit too light for me so I'm just darkening, it, darkening the uh, sea behind the waves. Adds a bit of contrast and uh, creates that illusion of uh, bright white breaking waves. Again softening the edge with a clean paper towel. Just darkening lots of the shadows now and um, slowly building up with uh, thin washes Again, I'll dab out, but as you can see now, they're starting to take more shape. It might seem a bit laborious doing it this way, but I think uh, you get a better effect. But you know, try, try, try anyway. Uh, you, know, you can use a, as I said earlier, you can use a uh, a damp brush to soften edges. But um, I just find that uh, doing things this way, you get uh, you get that feeling of depth. Just strengthening some of the uh, shadows, uh, the edges of the waves in the uh, in the foreground. Again, dabbing out a little bit. You can see now by building building up with uh, thin washes, uh, sometimes wet into wet, uh, but mostly I've let uh, let the underwashes dry a little bit. Just using a rigger to uh, define some of the uh, shadows on the uh, waves where they're just lapping on the shore. Only a small amount of sh shading at the edge just defines the uh, the waves a little bit and the edge of the water. The other reason I, reason I use a paper towel is um, it helps to retain the uh, whiteness of the paper. If you start uh, softening edges with, uh, with water Sometimes you lose the uh, uh, the whiteness of the paper a little bit, so uh, I find the paper towel method quite good for that. As you can see, the the waves are nice, nice bright white. I don't need to uh, add very much at the end. I will use some white gouache to uh, add some splashes, but uh, I'll talk about that when I get to it. Just add a little bit more green to that um, area where the uh, the sand is damp at the edge of the where the where the waves have washed up, and strengthening the darkness of the uh, the drier sand in the foreground, and then blending it together with some clean water. Just darkening a few of the shadows in the breaking waves. And I've let all that dry and I'm now using white gouache to uh, just put a few highlights on the, uh, the lapping waves where they're just uh, running up the shoreline a little bit. Just helps to define them. Keeping it loose and fluid, not being too specific. This is a number zero rigger, so you get a really nice thin line with it.
Just indicating a few breakers in the sea in the distance. Just a few little touches of uh, white gouache. I just put a piece of uh, white paper over the uh, sky. I'm going to. I'm just going to uh, splatter some uh, white gouache, just to indicate some uh, drops of water flying off the tops of the uh, breaking waves. Tricky is not to go over the top. Just to indicate a few of them. It's, uh, it's just a, a suggestion of what's there. Just putting some detail on the uh, the gull in the foreground now. This is just um, neutral tint, and I'll, I'll add a bit of uh, white gouache to uh, break it up. As I said when I was talking about the composition earlier, putting uh, one seagull in the foreground and a group of gulls in this slightly in the distance, uh, dipping into the sea, obviously trying to catch fish, uh, it just creates that depth in the painting. I just put a piece of paper over and I've just mixed up some um, burnt sienna and some sepia just to uh, splatter some uh, some stones in the uh, in the sand pebbles and things on the, on the beach just dabbing a few out just a bit of variety some sharp some softer and I think we're done Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this uh, useful. As I said, uh, there's no right or wrong way to paint waves. Uh, this is the way I do it and I find it works really well. Um, do try different ways of doing things. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed this and found it useful. Um, and do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. And thanks again for watching.